Hey, good morning, everybody, or afternoon, wherever you are. Welcome to Ferguson's um, Installation Best Practices for Mitsubishi, better known officially by Mitsubishi as the M&P Series Field Service Seminar. Hopefully, since you paid for this course, you have the official book in front of you that you're able to follow along. Um, if not, get a hold of someone at your local Mitsubishi distributorship. Um, that being said, my name's Jim Newell. Um, I wanna thank uh, Doug Zerby, who's here assisting me today, helping run some of the uh, equipment. And hopefully between the two of us, we'll be able to do an acceptable job for you. So um, we work for Ferguson HVAC. We don't know exactly where this video is going to end up, so we're going to kind of keep it generic um, at this time. Um, but I must say that we are being told at this time that this seminar will be accepted by Mitsubishi for their official training um, as long as we follow the training. So therefore, we've got a PowerPoint. Now, if you're looking at me live as opposed to a PowerPoint, that's fine for now. I'll have you switch over so that your big screen, you'll be able to follow much better because obviously on the screen, it's really hard to follow. So we're, we're learning how to work cameras and all kinds of new technology, which quite frankly, weren't around when I started in the HVAC business. So that's been a little while ago. Um, uh, I always tell people that I haven't seen it all, but I've seen a lot. And uh, so we're seeing more and more all the time. Um, so staying on the Mitsubishi theme, and you'll see I'm easily sidetracked, even with nobody in the room. Um, my mind just kind of works a little bit differently, I guess. Um, but we're going to follow the PowerPoint. So therefore, I find it best that you follow it in your book. You can see it on the screen. Please use your book to take notes. That's what it's there for. Um, we're Even though this is with Mitsubishi saying field service seminar, we kind of renamed it as the installation best practices because Mitsubishi is really high tech. If you don't know that already, you know, you heard it here first, but you know it. OK, you walk up to it, you see computer boards, you see a bunch of wires and all kinds of intimidating things. Our goal today, usually I hold up, you know, the whole inside guts of a unit and say, you know, we can't let this intimidate us. So hopefully by the time we're done today, it'll be much less intimidating. Um, we're going to cover some service things. We're going to cover a lot of installation things. The reason for that is with Mitsubishi's high tech, not only products, they also keep track of things like who calls us for what and what issues are they having and why are they having those issues? So what they've done is come up with this for our class. And even though we talk about service, what they found out is over 90% of initial service calls have to do with the installation. So what they've done is put together a, a seminar on reviewing best practices of installations. That way, if you do the installation right, in all likelihood, you're not going to have an issue that you need to be worried about service, at least for all probability, many years. And that's what we find out is a lot of guys tell me, I never get to learn about Mitsubishi service because we never have any service calls to learn anything on. And then when you do, you forget about it by the time you have another service call like it. So a lot of what we're gonna do today is we're gonna show you where to find the answers and how to find the answers we as uh, DSG's members of the Diamond Service Group, um, which there's three of us here at Ferguson North, uh, four of us actually, I forgive me. Um, 
we have the ability to help you. Ferguson, or, um, excuse me, Mitsubishi has the ability to, to help you. We'll talk about some of those resources. And, um, and that's mostly what I want to get across is where to find the answers. And if you can't find them, who do you, who do you go to? What procedures do we go through? Um, so let's get started. And, you know, we'll kind of zoom through the, through the next slide. Housekeeping, this is obviously if somebody's in here. Um, uh, obviously, you're probably watching this at home or in office. You know where your coffee is. You know where your bathroom is. Uh, and you know how to get out of there. So enough said about that. Okay, so Mitsubishi is telling us we anticipate this being an official class. Um, however, there will be no credits by any other organizations as you see on your screen. Okay, some of the things we're going to cover, we've got six or seven modules that we're going to go through. We'll dwell on some of those modules more than the other, and uh, let's keep on moving as I drop everything. So don't mind me, because I got to keep up with technology also. What are we going to do? We're going to look at the M&P series. I'm sorry, what's up? Oh, okay. Don't don't mind us. Hey, this is new to everybody here. So um, we're just going to keep on going. The um, so M and P's. We're going to talk about what what the two different product lines are. Ferguson North at this time does not handle the city multi line, so we're not going to get into some of the city multi. Um, products, the heavy duty commercial products. We're going to look at indoor outdoor units. And more importantly, we're going to identify self service resources that are available to you from Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi has decided that they will share everything that they've got on their units with you. And we're going to we're going to look into in pretty good detail some of those resources. Okay, some of this stuff is kind of self-explanatory. Any, any system that we're dealing with has an indoor unit, outdoor unit, a controller. Now, some of you may be familiar with branch boxes with some of our product line. So those are the three things, uh, four things that are available or that are consisting of a system. You know, Pretty much basic information there. Um, we do want to cover the labels a little bit in depth. So on the labels of a unit, and forgive me as I keep turning to look at the class because I'm used to dealing with a classroom of people using my pointer to point out different things that's not going to work on this. Unfortunately, that's why you've got the book and PowerPoint in front of you. So one of the more important things we want to look at on our labels is um, we've got a model number. Right underneath of it is the service reference number. That comes in and that's critical when you call us or you're looking for parts that you give us the service reference number because they're not always the same. In your example, I believe most of these are almost identical, except for the the, the, uh, the one indoor unit. And if you can see this, there's a dot MX after it. That's an important change that may change some of the parts. So if you're, when you call in, you want to make sure that you give the whole service reference number along with the model number. And the serial number is always a good thing to include with that. Okay. Um, it's going to show voltages, the refrigerant, obviously. Right now, you know, we're only dealing with R410A. You all know we've got some changes coming. Who knows what's going to happen, where that's going to go. Um, compressor amps are on there. A really neat thing, if you can see it on your, on your PowerPoint, in the bottom right-hand corner of every one of those labels is a little QR code. So you can hit that with your phone and bring up information for that particular unit. 
So that can be very, very helpful when you're out in the field. Okay. So let's just real quickly run through some of the uh, nomenclature. Uh, we've given an example for an MXZ HC48NA-1 product. We should recognize that uh, outdoor unit. We're pretty much familiar with that. The M in the M in that series is telling us it's a mini split residential. I like to highlight residential. You may want to underline that and highlight that in the book. X is telling us it's part of the multi-zone uh, outdoor system. Z is telling us that it's a heat pump. Real simple. But if you take your model number of any unit, you're able to break it down and see exactly what it is. The number eight on this one particular is telling us that it has the capability to control eight zones. That would be the maximum. We don't have to use them all, but it has the capability to handle eight zones. Seize the generation. Um, you know, if you've been around long enough, we know, and you know, there's been, we've gone from the B generation to the C generation. Obviously there was an A generation before that. I'm not familiar with that one. Um, I go way back with Mitsubishi when it was only them and another brand and used to install Mitsubishi products right from the start. Kind of got away from it and came back in later on. Um, anyhow, 48, had three zeros to it. That's 48,000 BTUs. In other words, we divide that by 12,000 per ton. We got a four ton unit there. Uh, hopefully the math wasn't too fast, uh, but it's all, it's all there in, in front of you. N is our voltage in this particular line. So we can see N just means 230 volts. Technically it's 208 to 230 volts. We'll get into more of that later on. Um, w would be 115. We don't have a lot of that. However, there is a new line of 115 products if they're not available. My understanding is they will be very soon. There's a market for it. Other companies have 115 volt products. Mitsubishi's not going to lose market share. So if it's not out already, we've got 115 volt units coming. A has to do with the wiring. And then the dash after that could be different versions of the same model. Now, you've heard of hyperheat, maybe. If, if it is a hyperheat unit, you will see the HZ interjected between the A and the dash. Real simple stuff. Now, M-series equipment. You can see we've got wall mounts, ceilings recessed. They don't show the single uh, direction one. We've got wall mount units, horizontal ducted, multi-position air handlers. All those are able to be used um, with the M-series. We've got coin only units, we've got heat pumps, and we've got multi-zone heat pumps. And up in the uh, upper right hand corner, you can see that that little thing's called a branch box. We'll get into a little bit more of that later on, um, part of uh, a more sophisticated system, but not, not hard to install or service of its own. Keep on going. I'm not going to dwell on this slide hardly at all, but you will need to know if you're the one picking uh, and selecting equipment for a job, what goes with what. Don't go by this particular slide. Don't use this book to do that. Use your latest literature that's available from Mitsubishi for what, what indoor units go with what outdoor units. Okay. These are, this is just an example to show, for, ex for example, all the different types of indoor units that can be used with the outdoor unit. It's example only. Same thing here. Okay, let's look at the P series really quick. Also, nomenclature P stands for professional. That could maybe be better translated in the United States as commercial. Remember I said M series is residential. So, that's what it's made for. Those are the conditions they're designed to be used in. Please don't ask us to come out to a office building where you installed an M-series product that's not working properly because that would be a misapplication. We don't like misapplications. Uh, we've seen too many of them. 
what we're trying to do here is to keep you out of trouble. So for you to stay out of trouble, you can put P-series in a residence, but you do not put M-series in a commercial building, especially if you think you're going to try a cool server room or critical like that. But even offices, there's a there's a really good, and I'll show you where it's, I'll try to remember to show you where it's at when we get into the link drive um, support that's available to you, there's a really good application note of using M-series equipment with low ambient applications. And basically it's a no-no, we don't do it. Sorry for being strong on that, but that's just the way it is. I've seen too many dealers get in trouble and I don't want you guys to be in trouble. U just means the type of indoor, the type of unit that it is. You can see that Z, heat pump, Y would be pulling, so on and so forth. A is the standard. Now, a little bit different with the P series. It's a hyperheat. It's going to be HA at this point. 42, same as the M series, 42,000 BTUs in this case, three and a half ton system. NH is the representative of the 208 230. Model generation, BS. Like I always say, BS doesn't stand for what you might think it stands for. Uh, that is our seacoast protection. Um, I'm being told that that came from Bermuda Special because Bermuda, anywhere for the most part, if you live high enough in Bermuda, you can see the ocean. So there's a lot of salt air there and this protection was developed for that market is what I was told. So that's, a, that's an option uh, in our area here in the Northeast. It may be needed down along the shorelines, but um, we don't see a lot of it. I asked somebody one time, what does it cost? What's the cost difference? And they weren't able to tell me because I'm not sure we even sold any, at least that they knew of. P-series, pretty much the same as M series, but there's things missing here. Okay. What's missing? I always ask the question, what's missing? Like I have a live class, but you know, the indoor units are pretty much the same. We've got cooling unit only heat pump units. What's, what's missing? One of the things that's missing are branch box systems. But what I always point out is the multi zone heat pump is not available in the P series. Now, we do have the ability to what we call twin two indoor units with one outdoor unit. It's a special application. There's some really good application note, notes uh, on how to do that, what's required, some of the regulations when you go through that. Um, but if you need an application for, let's say, a long room where you maybe want to put two of the ceiling recessed units in that to spread it out, and then you can put, tie the two together off of one controller to condition that room. So that is available. We're not going to get into the, the nitty gritty details of that. Now, here's where I want to spend some time. This, I've had people call me many times and I ask them, they're calling me for service advice or technical support. And I ask them, do you know about my link drive? And oftentimes I'll get, well, I heard about it, or no, I haven't. And, no, I haven't. And, no, I guess maybe I heard about it, but haven't used it. Well, this is worth the price of admission right here. This is our main support for you as the Mitsubishi servicer and dealer. So if you have a service problem, that's why I want to get into it at this point. So if you have a service issue, we, we provided my link drive, we as Mitsubishi, and there's a couple parts in there. So what I'd like to do is have Doug switch over to my link drive. He'll just give me the thumbs up when he's there. So if you're just going to Google my link drive, I'm, I'm being told it's up there in front of you. If you need to get there, just Google mylinkdrive.com. 
if the US one doesn't show up, it will show the main one for the worldwide. Obviously, Mitsubishi is a worldwide company. So if you click on that one and you see a bunch of flags, just click on the United States flag. When you do that, you're going to come up with the US site for my link drive. Now, I want you to bookmark that. So what I did on my computer, most, most guys will create folders. So I've got a Mitsubishi folder. I've got number one in my, on the line because I've got different sites under that Mitsubishi folder. Number one on that line is my link drive because that's where I go. If you're calling in asking for technical support, the first thing I'm going to do is open up link drive. And we'll walk through this together. But your number one asset is right there. So I've got a saying that I use a lot. And we've talked about Mitsubishi being high tech. The equipment's high tech. It's a high tech company. We need high tech technicians using high tech tools to provide high tech support or high tech service. One of those high tech tools may be a tablet so that you can access this and see it in something that you can read. It, quite frankly, at my age, with my eyes, I am not looking at this on a cell phone. I realize that may be all you have, and it's better than nothing. If you, that's the only way you get, to, you have to get to it. Turn it horizontally. That'll help spread the lines out, blow it up, and you'll be able to follow. You'll be able to get through it. I'm just trying to help you. Okay. So <clears throat> I might get in trouble, but. I always say if your boss questions me telling you that you need an iPad or a tablet, have them call me. I'll take the heat. Um, quite frankly, um, there are very inexpensive computers, PC computers, which may be even a better way to go. I was in Walmart the other day, just happened to walk by and I looked down and here's a laptop computer on the shelf for 200 bucks. I go, what, what is this thing? And it, it's, I forget the word for it. Um, web uh, something or anybody in the audience help me out. Uh, I forget. But basically, you it's a little computer. The, the, the silence is deafening from all two from all two participants. Um, it'll probably come to me. Um, if it doesn't, so what? Uh, but anyhow, it, it's a computer that you can have at your home, all connected to the internet. My link drive can be downloaded onto a PC version computer. If you do that, you can then also update it on a regular basis, maybe once a week. It will have the latest version of everything that's on the website right there on your computer. So when I used to go out and do field service or a, a service call, I knew what the model number was, the, the equipment that I was going out on. I used to download the service manuals. By the way, did I tell you the service manuals are available for you in Link Drive? Yeah. We're going to maybe look at that in a short, short period of time here. Um, so Link Drive uh, has a lot of resources that you can see here. Installation manuals. They don't tell you service manuals, but the installation manuals there. So if you need to look at something before you're going out the next day to install a new new product line, the install manuals in the equipment. Maybe you didn't get a chance to open it up, take it with you, your company won't let you do that. You don't need to. Just go to Link Drive, pick the model number of the product that you're gonna be installing, go to the install button, it'll bring up the whole manual. We got wiring diagrams in there, they're in the service manuals, we've got refrigerant diagrams. If you're on the end of the sales or the, um, where you're picking the equipment selections, we've got submittals in there that you can um, uh, access. Parts, I always recommend if you need a part, go into here and double checking the parts before you call in and ask for parts so that you and the parts guy are on the same page. You know, it, it's it's easy to get a little bit confused with it. That's where that, ex, that whole service reference number comes in handy. 
support um, M&P Troubleshooter. We're going to go there in a, in a minute. And then we've got tech tip videos. Um, Doug, if what I see on the TV screen here, is that what they are seeing? Okay, so let's go up to the to the top. And so we've we brought up, okay, so right along the top, we see home accessories, so on and so forth. It's real simple. If you need to look at an M-series piece of equipment, you're going to click on M-series. And if you just page down a little, little bit, you can see right up top is our 410A systems. And down below that, hiding a little bit, is our R22. That's why it's hard to see this on a cell phone. But we've got all kinds of information for old all, all the old R222 systems that you know you may run into. I just ran into one the other day. So let's go back up to the top, please. Um, we talked about app notes. Um, if you go over to the app notes, Doug, why don't you click on that? And right there, you have we've got a whole series of app notes. One of the ones, if you're going to be installing MXZ systems, please download that bottom one there. You don't need to click on it, Doug, but uh, Applying MXZ-C multi-zone systems. We're, we're finding that most of our questions for technical support have to do with MXZs. Single systems are easy. There's some, there's very little that that can be messed up. You got one line set going between the units, you got one one uh, cable running between the units, and you know basically it's plug and play. As long as you do your installation properly, you turn it on, it's going to work. Um, when it comes to the MXZ systems, there are some, I don't want to say quirks, but there's some um, oddities that you need to be aware of. And um, we'll get into some, some a little bit about that later on. But that's one of my favorite notes there. Right above it is that low ambient cooling app note that we talked about. Please read that so that and then that'll give you a greater understanding why we can't use M series equipment in low and run it in low ambient conditions. The bottom line is an M series equipment will not give you full cooling capacity as it gets colder outside. I know always remember that Mitsubishi systems and, and quite frankly, I've been doing this since I hate to tell you, 1975 and learned air conditioning early on. And our thought process for some of us older guys is we're used to 40 years of doing things and, and equipment working the same way. And that's not always the case when we get into this modern equipment. So uh, if you read that bulletin, it will give you a better understanding of why we don't use M-series equipment uh, in, excuse me, M-series equipment for uh, commercial spaces of any type. Okay, so uh, Doug, what I'd like you to do is go to, um, there's another um, bookmark that I'd like you to do. It's called m &P Troubleshooter. It's under many of the products, but uh, just to make it easier, if we go to the uh, I'll go to the wall unit under M series. Pick a wall, pick a wall mount unit right there. This is how easy it is to find stuff, guys. Um, find a GL model right there on the left hand side. Uh, you can open like the first one right there, the GL06. It doesn't matter. Now hit the service button. It's going to take you right down to. Lo and behold, on, see on the right there's a service manual. We're not going to go there, but that's where you find the service manual for every piece of equipment. Find the unit, hit service, buttons down, you get the service manual. On this one here, it has an MMP troubleshooter. So I'd like you to click on that, Doug. Now that the MMP troubleshooter's open, I want you to bookmark this page. Put that under your Mitsubishi folder. So there are your two most valuable resources for service. Okay? Installation also, MMP troubleshooters geared mostly for service. And just to give a real quick example of that, um, why don't you hit the M series? And we were dealing with a MSZ, if I remember correctly. So we go that here, we pick our wall, our, our wall unit, 
And that, when it has a failure, is going to have a flashing code. And you can see right there, uh, that one's hit a six time flash. Let's say the light on the, on the units fall out at six flashes. We're going to have something that looks like this, which is a great troubleshooting page that you can follow very simply. And it's telling us six time flash. Hey, look at that. The outdoor unit has a thermistor problem. So we know we don't have a problem with the indoor unit. And if you page down through, it will give you some steps to follow, I believe. Maybe not on this one, um, but it'll give you symptoms. Um, so let's let's say we had a four time flash. What would that be? Well, that one's pretty simple. The indoor control board has a memory fault. Symptom is we got no operation other than that flash. And uh, there's some troubleshooting step by step, what to do, what to follow. So it's real simple. And until you come to the, the solution or the, the problem. So I think that's enough of that for now. If you get a chance to come to our two to three hour, depending on on uh, how quick we get through it, but Ferguson, HVAC North here, has a class on Mitsubishi maintenance and service, where we really get into service in a lot more detail. And I actually present actual service calls that have either come into Mitsubishi, where the a case has been created, and or into us, um, and we, we actually work through those scenarios to come to a solution. And um, the best part about it is you realize that all the answers are there. Almost all the answers are there. But the vast majority of the time, we can work through any service issue um, to come to a, to a conclusion. And if not, then we go up a step and we get a hold of, of Mitsubishi. And we'll help you with that too, because the last thing they really want to do, I mean, Mitsubishi gives you an 800 number, but everybody calls that number. It used to be it would go right to tech services. They've changed it where now you call that number and you're like anybody calling in. You could be a homeowner, you could be a dealer, you could be an engineer, you could be anybody in the country is calling the Mitsubishi 800 number. And instead of going to tech service, you're going to a someone that's just answering calls. And they're going to make up a case and put you in what they call the queue. And the last one that I watched last week, I saw somebody put in a phone call and give a, got a case number. And at the end of the day, this is about 11 o'clock in the morning. By the end of the day, they had not gotten a call back from Mitsubishi. They're busy. Mitsubishi's growing by leaps and bounds. They can't handle it all. So in the scheme of things, your next resource after you've worked through M&P Troubleshooter, which I like going there first, then go to the service manual as needed. Then if you still need assistance, then you call your local um, Mitsubishi distributor, in our case, Ferguson here, because of the size that we are with the DSGs that we have, they've asked us to be that next step. In the scheme of things, Mitsubishi, from what I hear, has about six tiers of tech support. We're considered tier one in their eyes. And, and that's okay. I don't really care how they rate us. Um, but if we can't handle and find you a solution, we will make up a case. We'll get back to you, and then we'll give you the case number. Now when you call the 800 number, you put in your case number, and that will take you directly to tier two, okay? So you're getting indirectly, you're going to a higher level than calling that 800 number, number directly. So in our case, Ferguson North here, call us first. Um, and if you're dealing with us, you have our number. Again, we're not gonna post phone numbers and such because we don't know where this video is going. Um, so those are, those are our, our resources. Link drive, in link drive, m &P troubleshooter. And at that point, um, local Mitsubishi distributor and then Mitsubishi themselves on their 800 number. So 
That was the end of module one. How are we doing time-wise? My goal here is to not make you sit on your butts for so long. Um, we're trying to maybe do 50 minutes or so. We're about, about there. We're going to take a 10-minute break. I believe what we're going to do to keep make sure that our video continues to operate is mute our phone, our microphone here and come back in 10 minutes. So you probably will see a blank screen um, and then we'll just start up. So it's on you to take your 10 minute break. Again, you know where your restrooms are, you know where your coffee is and uh, have at it. Talk to you soon.